key issues in our demand uh, when we met with the police is that we want the governor to to be the one to receive. So far, we've received five of them. The chair of the committee is still seated with other members. Hello there, welcome to the 25th day of August 2023. This is Let's Talk Ghana here on Studios 2 Television. This is the show where we put Ghana first in all of our conversations. And coming up on today's edition, we're big on the governing New Patriotic Party's first ever Super Delegates Conference because there's a new twist to it. The party is going hard on vote buying and declaring a zero tolerance for that for that matter, they are going to remove ballot papers which are openly displayed or persons who take pictures of their ballot papers during the Superdelegate Conference tomorrow, the 26th of August. That's up on our agenda today. We'll get into the details and let you know exactly what the party has been saying. And much later, you know, we've been talking about the NDC and their march or the protest to have the Bank of Ghana Governor Dr. Ernest Addison resigned. The protests and the route is becoming a subject of contention. The police says they've not agreed with the NDC and peace. The MP say you've agreed with us. We we'll subject that to some analysis on today's edition of the show. That's our package for you today. Stay with us. We'll return shortly. Delva teeth or sink our teeth into these matters. Stay with us. This is Let's Talk Ghana. We're back shortly. <music> Right then, you all come back to Let's Talk Ghana. I am Eric Mawin Egbeta. As always, the show airs Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays on Studios 2 TV, on YouTube, as well as on Facebook. Always a delight to get feedback from you as to exactly what it is that we continue to bring you here on Studios 2 TV. And promises that we'll continue to serve you the very best. Tomorrow is a big day, the history of the Fourth Republic and democracy party politics and the likes because we're going to be seeing the college system as experience in the united states and their their politics but this time on the front of the governing new patriotic party because as part of the conversation to elect a new flag bearer 10 individuals have put themselves up we've been walking you through the details and names of the individuals and the likes uh, over the last editions of the show well Per the NPP's constitution, 10 is too great a number. And so we have to bring that down. That's when I say we, that means the NPP, not me. I'm not, I'm not a card bearing member of the party. So the, the delegate or the NPP as a party has to bring down the number at least to five before they can vote proper to elect a flag bearer. That process is described as a super delegate conference. And it's happening tomorrow, the 26th of august 2023 there's been a lot of conversation in the lead up to this we've been bringing you details when the forms were picked and all of that the the, the uh, candidates have been campaigning all across the country well all of that comes to a halt tomorrow the 26th where 956 uh, individuals in 17 centers and so for every region somebody there's a center where voting is going to take place. Uh, the 956 is going to involve regional executives, members of parliament, card-bearing members. Um, we have ministers who are card-bearing members, functional executive committee members, and the likes to decide on the five that will go forward and those that won't. Well, the party has been issuing a number of guidelines and raising a number of concerns with regards to the entire process. But most importantly, the concern of vote buying. You remember I said North. Uh, yes, vote buying came up really strong and it's become a subject of intense debate. Particularly for a governing party, the perception is always that there's a lot of money to throw around and you can buy voters and all of that. Well, the elections committee of the NPP, they've been going hard on all of that, seeking to ensure that that does not happen when they go to the polls tomorrow. And so they've issued guidelines on the voting process in a statement that's going to come up on your screens 
right about now. Uh, that statement was issued on Thursday, August 24th. And amongst many things, 13 pointer number 13 is thanking you for paying attention or reading their statement. But point seven really is where I want your attention to be at, where they say that it is essential to note that publicly displaying cash ballot constitutes a criminal offense. The party hereby serves notice that those who violate that provision shall be subjected to legal repercussions in accordance with the law and then there's a bold aspect of that statement which says that delegates are hereby informed that any ballot publicly displayed will be rejected we wish to further emphasize that there will be no congress on the day of voting and voting will be strictly walking and so that's the that's the latest from the npp that look if you vote and you say, oh, I voted for Alan, I voted for Baumi, I voted for Ken, I voted for Joe Gatti, I voted for Dr. Kunedu Apreku, uh, Adai Nimo, you name it, Kojopoku, every, whoever you vote for, you show it to come and prove that my loyalty lies with you as I've been following you around, your vote will be removed and not be a part of the final counting. So that's, that's essentially what the process is like. But additionally, They've been also meeting as well, the presidential aspirant seeking to iron out, that's the elections committee seeking to iron out uh, the last final details. The director of elections of the NPP, Evans de Marco as well, he spoke to some journalists uh, yesterday on all of the processes and what should happen if there's a tie. It's a possibility that eight people could have the same numbers and just two people who have the numbers to, to make it through. What happens? And so he's been speaking to that. Uh, let's just go and listen to exactly the explanations he's been offering, preparations and the likes uh, shortly. Here's Evans Nimako. Well, thank you. The, the new Patriotic Party put together the OK's committee to be in charge for the conduct of the presidential elections. Part of the process is the conduct of this special electoral college. Goes willing by Saturday, the delegates will meet in all the regional voting centers, as well as the party headquarters. We are ready, we've put in charge, in terms of security, the National Police Service, in terms of the conduct of the exercise, is the electoral commission. The committee has reached this decision and this position because we've had very uh, constructive consultative engagement with the aspirant and their agent with the electoral commission as well as the Ghana police service. We expect that on Saturday our delegates will do the needful, will comply with the security arrangement put in place, cast their votes at the various centers and return to their respective areas and then when it is one o'clock the EC will do the honor of uh, opening the ballot, sorting, uh, counting, and then recording uh, to all the candidates the figures they would, that they would have gotten. The EC will do the overall uh, collation at their headquarters and then come finally to the party office to do what we call the declaration of the first five uh, presidential candidates. And so we are set as we speak, all the ballot papers have reached the regional secretariat of the EEC as well as the registers. Aspirants have been given the final voter register. We just finished engagement with them and so everything is set for the party to conduct this special electoral college. What was the engagement with the aspirants about? I mean we have Saturday to to as the D Day and so part of the arrangement is to seek their final concerns uh, for redress, if any. And so uh, the party uh, is expecting that all concerns that they had raised uh, having been addressed through the giving out of the final register will put to rest all earlier concerns they had expressed. And as part of the process, we have said that we'll be working with the aspirant into the elections. And so the, the doors of the committee uh, are still open for consultation and uh, the media, I must say, we are grateful to you. You've covered all these, as I said, the very day 
we open our nomination up to this day and we are looking forward to have a very fruitful engagement on Saturday and also to be granted with a, a good weather uh, for the party to select the first five of its presidential. Okay, term. may we know how many aspirants came for this meeting? Was it for even all of them? So far we've received five of them. Uh, the chair of the committee is still seated with other members. Some members have had to go to other areas. Mind you, because the committee is made up of nine members, uh, we've co-opted others who also travel outside of Accra to supervise the conduct of the exercise at the various regions. So we are engaging among ourselves to ensure that we will have a very peaceful, fair, transparent exercise. And we are all going to be uh, witnesses to what is going to happen on Saturday. For the five that who came, what, what were some most of their concerns? What did they center on mainly? Well, some want to receive their accreditation for their agents and if the committee also has any information for them. And so there isn't much uh, coming from them as of today. So you are still waiting for the others to come? We are still seated, and so if anybody wants, we've extended invitation that if anybody has a concern, we are open to engage. After when? Today is Thursday, we have tomorrow, Friday, and then Saturday. And so invitation to them that today, if there's any concern they want to raise, we are open to receive them. So Director, on the day of elections, what provisions are available if there's any form of a tie? Well, as part of the process, uh, it's been agreed that in an event of tie, or in an event of the conference not able to provide the first five, they'll have to be rerun. And so 2nd September 2023 has been slated for a possible run of dates. Mm -hmm. right, that... So we know that the, the party has issued the latest protocol so far as this election is concerned. But is the election committee aware of some reported cases of campaign delegation and all that? Are you aware of something like that? Can you clarify? Thank you. We are not aware of any campaign. The delegates for this special electoral college are senior members of this party. We are looking at members of parliament, we are looking at sector ministers, we are looking at regional ministers, we are looking at external brand delegates, wings uh, delegates, national council members, national executive committee members, founding members, national council of elders, who have the clout, the influence to put together all these delegates uh, as a way of camping them to influence their, their voting uh, pattern. I, 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 at this point, we want us to look at the positives of the whole exercise. We've had a very, as I said, very constructive engagement with aspirants. We are hoping to have a very successful uh, special electoral college. And so let's look at the positives and let's do away with the, those nuances that do not have any foundations. Uh, Director, what provisions have been made available in the statement concerning delegates who vote and will take pictures of their ballots? We've said and we've placed strong emphasis on it that no delegate should make any attempt to take photo of where the person would have voted. And if anybody gets to that stage, the security will take charge of it. In fact, we expect and we know that our delegates who are senior party members will do the needful. And we don't anticipate that any of them will go to that extent to invite the security to do what they will have to do. Please explain further the issue of the tie. So if you don't have a first five, but you have maybe a first three and the, the last two are ties, how will it work? The letter of our constitution, Article 13.19, indicates that there must be first five of the presidential candidates. And so if it is first three, then it means that there will have to be another uh, elections for the two to be elected to add up to five. At any point in time, the special electoral college must elect five people for the contest later for November 4, 2025. 2023, sorry. Cheers. And so...
all of it listed out uh, we look forward to what it is that transpires tomorrow we'll be here to bring you details uh, of that here on studios 2 television we're going on a break when we return we talk about the bank of ghana governor and the the protest by the ndc and what the police has been saying this is let's talk ghana stay with us we're back shortly Okay, you're welcome back. This is Let's Talk Ghana, where we put Ghana first in all of our conversations. And so, on to a second subject matter, one that is of interest to a lot of people, has to do with the NDC minority group and their threat to march on September 5 against the BOG governor. They are demanding that he resigns. And so, they wrote a letter to the police alerting them of their plans to protest detail the routes to which they want to use and so they want to start from parliament go through the osu cemetery traffic light go through um, a number of key areas go through the the finance ministry high court complex makola kimbu and then end up at the bank of ghana and so on wednesday the police invited them for a conversation to seek to get an understanding as to really uh, let's talk about your roots well after the meeting which was a long meeting the NDC MPs came out and addressed journalists and said, look, uh, well, we've had conversations. The police were seeking to suggest that we should change what we want to pass. But we told them that, look, we've been through all these routes before. We've demonstrated all throughout those areas. And so we are going by our original routes. And so that's that's the case. Amako Fibwa, our deputy minority leader, addressed the media. Mahama Yarga was there. So we'll hear from Mahama Yarga because he sought to explain or answer some questions which have been raised by the police, which I'm going to speak to you about now. But in the evening of that set Wednesday, the police issued this statement, which is coming up on your screens right now. A statement from the police, which sort to suggest that, look, the NDC MP said we've reached an agreement. We've not reached any agreement. In fact, we're asking them to change the route for the demonstration and communicate back to us. So the concluding the last but one paragraph of that statement, which is on your screen now, says that the police are waiting to hear from the organizers to enable us to provide them the necessary security during the protest. So the police says when they were informed of the route, they did their you know, necessary background check, security here and there, and they realized that, look, why you want to pass, you cause public disorder that could be... Uh, it's a national security area even, and so we cannot allow you really... To, to go through that area and so change the location and then we'll provide you security. Yes, a response from Mahama Yarega to these uh, concerns, of course, uh, was speaking to journalists after they met the police. Uh, let's just listen to him. Honorable, oh, just briefly, you know, yesterday uh, when we engaged, you mentioned that amongst many things is the insistence on receiving uh, the BOG governor receiving the petition from the minority even after the explanations that have been coming from them. Is this something that you're still going strongly on that when you converge there on the faith, he must come out and receive that petition? Yes, uh, we. <clears throat> one of the key issues in our demand uh, when we met with the police is that we want the governor to, to be the one to receive our uh, petition. And that is why we must uh, march to the uh, central bank building itself so that he can come down and then uh, receive the petition himself. And we insisted on that uh, position. So I believe that the police will convey our demands to him. And I believe that he would make himself available to uh, receive our petition. You know that... You've, you say you've agreed on routes. Are you going to provide details on that? Because that, that appears to be uh, something that a lot of people will be seeking clarity on. Well, I mean, uh, leader has already uh, answered to those ones. As the days approach, we will communicate to those of us who are participating in the, the, the march uh, what the routes are. But the letters that our leader sent to the police, which many of you have already, you know, publicly discussed and broadcast contains the route that we proposed. Yeah, so there's no... So far as we are concerned, the route that we have proposed are the routes that we are going to use. The police, of course, in the discussions, 
discuss alternatives here and there, but we insisted that the routes that we have proposed are the routes we are going to use. And that is why we are saying that we haven't accepted any alternative arrangements. We've insisted that the routes that we have proposed are the routes we will use. And we believe and we have confidence in the Ghana Police Service. We've seen them police, you know, lengthier routes, uh, more complicated routes. There's no part of Accra that I sit standing here, I've never demonstrated through. And the police were there to ensure that it was successful. So, you know, the, what do they call it? The, the, the most strategic and important national security installation is the office of the president. And I'm sure as media men, you have covered demonstrations up to the frontage of the Flagstaff House. And senior people have come out of the Flagstaff House and received petitions. So if you can demonstrate or march up to the frontage of the Flagstaff House, how is it that you cannot demonstrate before or march to the frontage of the Bank of Ghana head of his building? Remember that the man is not kept at the head of his building. The man is not kept at the head of his building. If we're proposing to march to Spinters Road where there are warehouses where they keep their money, then that is where most of you would have been concerned. But this is the head office where there are workers. And, you know, there are office buildings across the, the city. And, you know, Bank of Ghana workers uh, use those facilities. So I don't think that there's any real security issue here at all. And so that's the, that's the, um, the explanation. And the minority also coming back, I said, look, where we are going is just an administrative area. If you want the place where they keep money, that's around Spintex. That is a security zone. That is where you don't go to. But his place, we want him to even come down and come for the statement, the petition that we're presenting wanting his sack. But, you know, this back and forth over uh, the police saying that, look, where you want to use, you cannot use it. And all of that. It's been coming up every now and then because of the Public Order Act, uh, which states that, if you want to engage on a demonstration, inform the police about it. You are not requesting for permission. No, that's not what the law says. You're just informing the police for public order sake, notifying them so that they can make arrangements to ensure that everything transpires. But the law also says that when the police finds reasonable ground to, to believe that the designation, the roots of the protest, could cause unrest, public disorder, then they can suggest to you to change the, the route. And that's what the police has done in that statement. But it's been happening quite a lot. If you remember Arise Ghana, that's what happened and resulted in clashes and people being beaten and tear gas fired. I was there and healed quite a lot of that, of that, of that tear gas. So we subjected all of that to some bit of scrutiny from a private legal practitioner Martin Pebu asked so what really he makes of it. That's what he told us. He believes that really the police cannot continue to make that argument if the seat of government was a designation for a protest. But I first asked him what he makes of the back and forth uh, consistently with regards to roots and, pros and, and protests in relation to the police in the last few years. Well, so I thank you that uh, naturally it's difficult to uh, tell in advance all the possible places that will be considered a city zone. Yes, that's where I see. Because you see, the lawmaker had indicated some specific buildings as a city zone. What would have been faced with is that would have seen more and more public buildings being designated as a city zone by the police. Mm. So it tells you that basically what the law expects us to do is to be reasonable. But on the part, or when we say reasonable, it's not an insult to anybody. In law, what it means is that to be reasonable means when you're coming to take a decision, take certain factors into consideration. Okay. Uh, so that's what the law expects of both the police and the protected. So it's not surprising. I mean, you know, in the next in the same past, to the extent that the occupied flat house were able to go to the uh, Jubilee house and get very close to the frontage and presented the application, mm. any other argument by the police that a certain building is a, a security zone and the rest looks very weak. Because once the occupied Ghana 
uh, they said uh, protesters were allowed to go to Jubilee House. Right. These arguments about security zones uh, subsequently are not strong. They are not strong. The police can give protection if they want to. Anywhere, the police can give protection. Mm. Then, then from that, it lends credence to the concluding statement of Mahama Yarega that they are being frustrated and the argument out there really that sometimes the police is used to douse the flame of some of these protests because if you're intending to, for instance, end up at the Bank of Ghana uh, and power pressure on an individual there to resign and the police is asking you to end up at the Independence Square, some make the argument that the impact of the entire march or the protest would have been defeated. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's the point. It's very unassailable. So the police should look at it. Like I said, in the law, yes, there is the discretion. We know there's also a huge element of security. So they should look at it and strike a balance. So straight away, what I can see, the balance for me now is that, look, the police can say that, okay, in the circumstance of the case, we will not let you get very close to the Bank of Ghana building. So maybe we'll give a 100-meter buffer, hmm, or maybe 50 meters, somewhere, but allow them to go close, allow them, I mean, to see the building so that the cameras can, uh, listen, capture the Bank of Ghana building and capture the uh, demonstrators to, uh, within one uh, different footage. Yes, that gives you the impact. Let them see the building. This is, yes, this is where the governor is, and this is where we are riling and riling that the governor should have done something better. I think the police can do it. The police can do it. Mm. There are ways to be done. As I said, apart from the 50 meter or maximum 100 meter buffer, then there will be further things like, okay, even to present a petition, um, it will be the leadership that will come close. So demonstrators maybe will be asked to stay maybe 150 meters away. And there will be policemen. If the police want to do it, there's a way it can be done. I think the police should do it because, look, uh, it's not only the uh, minority, the NDC people who are feeling the economic hardship. We are all feeling it. Look, you buy three oranges for five CDs. Three, or Marina, mm. three oranges for five CDs. Why? Three. Right. Three. One, two, three. For five CDs. So one... Orange is more than one, uh, this one, what do you call it, one CD, 50 pesos. Mm. Why? Why on earth? Right. the uh, uh, government contributed to it by giving the government too much money. That's what we call in banking terms, uh, printing of money. And so the argument there, he believes that the police cannot continue to make, to make that case. Uh, make it so strongly uh, and has made some suggestions as to how this can be resolved. But that's our package for you today, uh, the show. We'll be looking ahead to the elections tomorrow, I'll provide details of it for you, us exactly what it is that transpired, who becomes the, f the five who make it through. Remember, if there's a tie, September 2 will be the deciding date. We'll follow up on all of that and bring you details of it here on Let's Talk Ghana. I am Eric Mawenaik, but as always, a lot of thanks to production uh technical hands march number one behind all of that we're back again on monday hopefully with a bit more details and a bit more clarity as to exactly what it is that's transpiring in the country many thanks for watching studios 2 tv the truth is here in your eyes